This episode is proudly supported by Pepe Sayer Australian Cultured Butter. At Pepe Sayer, we focus on quality. So if someone comes into your restaurant and they see you're using Pepe Sayer, they know immediately that that is a quality product you've got in front of you on the table. And that comes from a decade of just doing quality butter day after day. For more information, go to pepisayer.com.au. Bringing a product to market is, you know, it's a pretty pretty proud moment. I still get a kick when I'm kind of, you know, in a grocery store and I'm kind of hovering around like a creep in the fabric section and watch someone grab it. It, it still gives me a little thrill. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. When the pandemic landed, it forced most in the food industry to rethink their offering. With a handful of successful restaurants, the likes of Dear St. Eloise, Love Tilly Divine and Regazzi, a young, dynamic group began making fresh pasta to heat and serve at home. Cam Burt saw an opportunity, not just as a stopgap, but to create a whole new brand and business, Fabrica. And it has become a real success story of the pandemic. It was a product born of COVID, actually. Like, um, I was a, a client. I was a, sorry, Scott and the boys, Matt and Nate, were clients of mine when I was selling stuff with Fino Foods. And um, when the first lockdown kind of hit in March 2020, um, Brigazzi basically went from you know, 100 to zero overnight and they were kind of scrambling to kind of figure out ways to generate revenue and Scott pretty quickly uh, developed the prototype for what would become the pasta packs that are in existence today. Basically, they were uh, vac-packed meals for two to finish at home that they were selling kind of from the kitchen door basically at Regazzi and I sort of um, as you know they're mates of mine and clients and I sort of said oh do you want me to take them around to a few of my retailers that you know I sell to and just see if they'll help out and sort of you know the industry was in such a state of flux everyone was pretty keen to sort of help each other out so uh, Maloney's Grocer in the eastern suburbs of Sydney kind of took on a few and they, they sort of went gangbusters much to you know, everyone's happiness really. And so I kind of went back to Scott and said, you know, there's probably something here. We can probably, you know, work this up into a, into an actual retail product that's, you know, got some long-term legs and the rest is kind of history a little bit. It kind of worked. The market sort of dictated that a little bit. They sort of just started to go kind of gangbusters. And obviously I'd been selling, you know, specialty food products with Fino so I kind of knew the market was kind of there for something like this and it hadn't sort of been done before to this extent or this quality so we kind of I spoke to my boss at Fino and said look this is you know what we're thinking is this is there something you know in that in the distribution model and he was kind of on board from you know day dot so then I kind of went back to the boys and I said you know we've got something here let's let's kind of let's do it. Although Cam is boots and all in the food industry now, food was never on his radar as a potential career while growing up. I'm uh, I'm a Queensland boy, so and my folks are kind of country kids. So my uh, my early introductions to food were very CWA kind of inspired, really. So I guess you know Sunday roasts and you know meat and three veg kind of stuff is where I came from. I, my father works in construction. My mum's a school teacher, so it was very pedestrian and not very adventurous. But I kind of fell into hospitality, you know, as a way as most people probably did to kind of put myself through uni and kind of found myself enjoying that side of it rather than kind of tertiary education. So I ended up kind of. Uh, opening up cocktail bars in Brisbane and had a restaurant up there for a little while and then yeah fell in love with a girl from Sydney and rang up Mike at Fino and said have you got anything in Sydney for me and ended up down here and yeah started uh started selling cheese and small goods and olives and that's how kind of I came to introduce get introduced to Scott and you know we became good mates from that with an amazing concept there was still a lot of work to be done to present it to markets beyond their usual restaurant customer base. 
Uh, I think the funniest thing was how the product was. I mean, Scott did very well and what was in the bag was incredibly good. And, you know, that's kind of probably half the reason I jumped on board is because I used to kind of just buy it often because I needed my Regazzi fix when there was no Regazzi in the first lockdown. But they looked terrible. They were, they like, you can imagine what a Regu looks like in a backpack bag. It looks like a colostomy bag that was sort of, you know, that's why, you know, that's when I knew we had something actually when people were prepared to buy this, you know, brown ragu in a a bag that looked like that and kind of come back for seconds. It was kind of <laughs> it was pretty, pretty impressive. But the product itself, I mean, nothing's changed of what's in the bag. It's, you know, it's a delicious product that's made to the standards at, at regards to spec. So, yeah. But, they, yeah, they, they didn't look great in the beginning. We've, we've only had three products basically for, well, the first 12 months. The, the six months prior to sort of, you know, June last year, we were making uh, very small quantities. I think we could only do like two or 300 packs a week out of King Street. And then we moved into the factory, but the same products still are there. So we've got the... Cook at home meals for two, basically with different shaped pasta. So pork and trot, pork and fennel sausage with trottoli, the the rigatoni with the wagyu beef um, and red wine, and the um, the big one which is the spaghetti with cacio e pepe. So essentially, made to the same spec as you know Scott's been tweaking his pasta recipe for years, and it's kind of you know the end result of that with the ability of people to kind of take it home and finish a meal off and, and, and have a pretty tasty Italian dish for two at home. Ready to heat pasta meals are not an uncommon product. A truly restaurant quality product is something new to market. Obviously people have been used to not going out so I, I know in Melbourne there's a, a real drive for you know very high quality finish at home or cook at home meals it's not quite taken as much traction in Sydney yet or even in Brisbane for that matter but I think people have become very used to entertaining and and eating high quality at home you know there's the rise of the the restaurant meal deliveries and those sorts of things I just think it's a a shift in mindset it's never going to replace the experience of going to a great restaurant nothing ever kind of will but I think there's more an acceptance that you know you don't have to have two minute noodles at home you can you can get good quality stuff that you don't have to spend hours preparing you know let us do the work as cam explains when you were talking about a product using very few ingredients quality is paramount well pasta's two ingredients right so it's i mean we traditionally most extruded pastas you know going to be semolina we use fresh egg pasta is how we make ours and I guess when it comes down to a product that's got so few ingredients it comes down to the quality of those ingredients so we use the best flour that we can find from you know Ben Fernie and Dubbo the New South, heart of the New South Wales wheat belt we use free range pasteurized eggs from Central Coast so low food miles high quality and then we make it to a recipe that Scott has kind of been developing over years so there's a high yolk to egg ratio there's a high egg to flour ratio so it's a silky rich product as opposed to you know what most people would be used to eating from extruded pasta which is largely semolina based which is nice and has its place but I don't think it's quite as rich or luscious as the Fabrica stuff. Business is booming and with that has come the means to expand operations. You know we're up to a ton a week now so it's sort of it's getting the you know the panorama the machine the extruder we use is like the size of a smart car so obviously that's impractical in a restaurant um but it's consistent like we make to a fairly exacting recipe so if it's one thing that we can produce out of the factory versus a restaurant it's probably the consistency you don't get those fluctuations and you know we work in humidity control and temperature control so it's there's a lot more of those variables that we can keep at bay that they can't do in a restaurant but essentially for all intents and purposes it's it's exactly the same as the pasta that that gets served at Regazzi. Created as a stopgap until the restaurants opened Fabrica has become a national brand 
and it's used in some of Australia's best restaurants as well. We're in Queensland, ACT, New South Wales, Victoria, which you are starting in South Australia, and Perth has proved a little difficult just for logistic times, but we've got about we've got over 150 stockists and growing pretty quickly. Um, that's in retail, and then the food service side of the business is growing probably faster still. We've got about 70 restaurants that are, that are using it as, as a food service product. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise to me, actually. There's restaurants that I sort of, I, I never imagined that they would buy in, like, buy-in product, like the pasta that we're making. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, got, it's a pretty big market for us. My favorite user is probably Dan Pepperell. Um, who's using it at Pellegrino's fairly extensively and Bistro. We, we created a shape with Dan for his kind of the, the Bistro 916 um, opening menu. Had these Lumaki with his snail dish, which got a fair amount of publicity. Um, well, talking to Dan Pepperell about Italian like pasta restaurants in Rome, very few of them are individually going to be extruding their own pasta. They all have their favorite pasta guy. You know, and they go and get their pasta from that guy, much in the same way that, you know, the very best sashimi restaurants have their own rice farmer that they get their rice from. So, I guess it's kind of that model that sort of excites me a lot in terms of chefs using it. Um, I kind of, you know, had imagined it would be more for for volume places, but we're getting some very very good chefs that are kind of using it. That kind of gives me a kick every time I see it on a menu. But as I say, I, I get kicks out of the smallest things. I like going into a restaurant and then knowing that it's our pasta and seeing it kind of, you know, leave the pass, it's pretty cool. Or just being in a grocery shop and seeing someone buy it or, you know, mentioning it and say, oh, I love that product or, you know, I get, I get constant kicks out of it. It's not just an at-home offering. Fabrica is now a wine bar and deli where people can see the magic and enjoy the spoils too. So that's the that's a constant evolution actually. That's sort of that's something that kind of keeps originally it was basically a deli and we we're gonna have a wheat retail wine and we we're gonna do sandwiches and, and not much else basically, but it became pretty apparent that people expected to get pasta there. So we've sort of been moving more and more into that that model. So the night time trade in there has been been very good lately. Um, but yeah, basically, Nate Hatwell and Matt Swoboda, my business partners, are, are incredibly good wine boffins. So we've got, you know, a lot of Italian focused natural wines, deli sandwiches, and, and pasta, basically. And Annie Ruda Bossico is our head baker there. We're selling, you know, sourdough out of there and, and cheese and small goods, and, and then just retail products from other producers that we kind of like that, you know, befit everything kind of surrounding an Italian meal at home. So the idea being that you could kind of come in there, buy some pasta by the gram, get a bottle of wine, get some nice sourdough, get some nice cultured butter, some anchovies, and, you know, you could basically have a dinner party, you know, with a 20-minute shop, and if you wanted to grab a sandwich while you're doing that, then great. The success is allowing Cam to explore new product lines and even a completely different food line too. There's a lot of stuff happening actually. We're um, we're doing plain pasta for retail. We're in some final stages of um, put locking away some pretty significant deals, some large large retailers, um, and another project that's coming up, which is particularly exciting for me, is a bakery. We're going to do Fabrica Bread Shop uh, in Roselle, which is pretty cool. Uh, Annie Ritter has been sort of baking sourdoughs and tarts and bits and pieces so it's give him the opportunity to flex his baking creativity which is pretty cool so that's kind of opening sort of in the in spring so that's pretty exciting and we've got a vegan offering some lasagna and yeah we're working on uh, some shelf stable tomato jarred sauces as well so yeah it's a bit happening it's fun Cam and the team decided early on to look at the challenges of the last few years as an opportunity, finding solutions rather than dwelling on problems. Uh, Everything continues to surprise me about this period of time, basically. It seems like we're facing a new challenge every day, but certainly, like, Fabric is a brand that is kind of, uh, I guess, from not wanting to be a profiteer of a pandemic, but... 
It's a product that works because of the time. I think there's, you know, there's a massive labor shortage. So venues that once were extruding their pasta are now buying it. People are used to eating at home. Therefore, you know, they're prepared to kind of spend 20 bucks on a meal for two and, you know, have it at home. So I guess there's those sorts of things that, you know, continually kind of surprise me. Bringing a product to market is you know it's a pretty pretty proud moment i still get a kick when i'm kind of you know in a grocery store and i'm kind of hovering around like a creep in the fabric section and watch someone grab it it, it still gives me a little thrill but just working with my you know working with good mates and you know, they kind of don't get any better than the love tilly guys like they're kind of top of their game and it's a pretty dynamic company to work with um so yeah this is sort of you know how my, my future's heading up like i'm very steeped in the fabrica framework of things. COVID has proved that from adversity, the most amazing positives and opportunities can emerge. And Fabrica is one of the most extraordinary success stories. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.